Hello everyone and welcome back to Creekside Maples, also known as Maple Mill Acres. So glad to have you back with us today. We're doing some more milling. So we thought we would just share with you uh, the project that we're working on here. And it's a beautiful sunny day, but it is bitter cold as witnessed by all the layers of clothing that we have on. But uh, any day that we can be out milling is a good day. So we wanted to share some uh, milling again here with you. We're starting a series actually, and we're gonna call it uh, Addicted to Milling. And we're gonna try to put out a episode every week of just uh, some basic milling, some nice tranquil music, relaxing to go with it, and uh, see where we can come up to. So here, I'm just uh, trying to figure out why the mill wouldn't go forward. Sometimes there gets a little piece of bark or something in front of the wheels, and it won't move. So I had to figure out what was going on there. Now it's time to undo the dog log dog and grab the PV and flip her up for another cut. We're inevitably going to make a nice cant out of this crooked log, but sometimes um, the logs have a bit of a crook in them, but the mill is great at straightening them out. I hate wasting lumber, so I try to use every log that I you know have that I cut whether it makes an 8 foot 2 by 4 or 1 by 4 or it makes a 2 by 8 or 2 by 10 I always try to use the lumber uh, for something I don't want waste so here we are going um, ahead here with the second cut and I know if you're watching perhaps a lot of guys cut bigger um, slabs off but I try to just take one inch slabs because I want to get as much lumber out of the log as possible those PVs come in handy. I have to switch out the uh, log stops on the back for the shorter ones. I'm going to be taking this right down to probably one inch so I don't want to run into those log stops. I'm sure everyone has done it. Um, I hate to admit it but I did it once just barely. Didn't hurt the blade but uh, I caught it just in time. So she's locked in now it's time to adjust the height or the width and take another piece of slab wood off the side of this log. So I'm just going to watch with y'all and uh, enjoy some of this milk. Some of you may be wondering why there's no lubrication coming out on my blade. There actually is. I just keep the lubrication right to just a small drip because if you get too much on the blade, it'll go up around the drive pulley and your blade will just keep coming off. So if you are having a few issues with blades jumping off, you may want to make sure that your lubrication stream is not too heavy. You just want it just a drop coming down on there. 
unless you're in really, really pitchy, sticky wood, then you might increase it a little bit. There's a nice cant right there. It's a nice eight by eight. Edging uh, a nice board there, turning that probably by the looks of it, I'd say I'm turning that into a uh, just a one by eight or one by ten. And this is how we put the logs up on the mill. Those are just on some threaded rod through those six by sixes. Now you'll notice I'm pulling the bottom log out from underneath that top one because that top one is so heavy that if I rolled it down over top of the uh, front one, then it would smash down on that bunk. And I really don't want to do that. I, it's built pretty strong, but still I try to, you know, not break things up and, and use my head and be smart about moving these logs because they are very heavy. I know everyone's going to tell me, be careful with my back, um, but I'm sliding that log more than lifting it, but I also have a back brace on. I keep it on under my shirts and stuff there, so that helps as well, but I don't have a tractor, so I have to do what I have to do. There we go, setting it right up on the... Uh, bunk of the mill rolls right up on there nice and easy and we flip our extensions from the bunk we flip them up out of the way you'll notice the problem I have here is the log has to come back a little bit to rest on that back bunk so I'm just going to push it ahead a bit and make sure it's on all three of the green bunks so that I have level milling because sometimes what happens if you don't have an end on a bunk it will um, not mill level and we just set her on there and she's good to go glad to have my wife pushing there <laughs> she's a big help to me down here at the mill she moves most of the slab wood and That's the slab wood bunk right there. We just try to keep it cleaned up so we throw everything in there. And you'll, if you stay tuned at the end of this video, you'll see how we deal with the slab wood. But you have to watch all the way to the end.
here I'm switching out the longer um, log stops for the shorter ones because once again I always try to remember to do that so I don't cut into them when I'm dropping the sawmill head down to mill thinner or the last couple of cuts on the on the uh, cant. notice on the back of the dog stop, the log stop that's just little thumb tabs of rebar that I welded onto those so that they wouldn't keep dropping right down through the tubes on the bunk it makes it really nice to be able to just you know loosen the set screw grab the thumb tab pull the log stop up and out of the way without having to fight with it and here we are Cutting some nice one by six. It's an order uh, for a guy that wanted a bunch for his uh, cabin that he's building.
Joni puts a lot of the smaller boards and piles for me. She does a great job. It really helps having that second hand around the mill for piling lumber and moving the slab wood and keeping the lumber piles with stickers on them. Just a lot of the little things that if I had to stop and do all of it, you would never really get much done. But she works really good right along with me. She's learned a lot. She calls the uh, slab wood cradle there. That's her office. She says she, she does office work there. But we enjoy working together. And there's a big old pile of slab wood. We'll use a lot of that in our maple syrup camp in the spring. And we burn a lot of it as well up at the house in the wood burner. And if anybody needs wood, we, we would sell some as well. It all goes to good use. Now the reason she's blocking that log is because I have to move the other end forward and I don't want it to roll. We were very lucky there that almost rolled right off of the um, the bunk there, the log bunk. So luckily we caught it just in time. We'll take the PV and we'll just give it a little roll there and come right back up on where it needs to be. We have a lot of mud. We've had a lot of rain so we've had to take the time always to use the wire brush to get the mud off the logs because if you had to mill through that, if your blade goes through that, it'll it'll dull your blade like every time you would go through it. You'd be forever trying to mill a log because you'd be putting new blades on all the time. And we're just going to roll that right up on there. It's a real neat system how I've designed it to get the logs right on the mill without much effort. <laughs> Thought we'd be silly for a moment. <laughs> mill this one out. This is how we junk up our slab wood. I designed the slab wood cradle so that I didn't have to measure. I wanted 16 inch, 14 to 16 inch blocks of wood, so I just designed it so I know where the saw has to go between each um, upright 2x4, and it's pretty simple. And it works really well. But we want to thank everyone for watching. We appreciate you, uh, each and every one that comes by the channel. And don't forget, please, to, if you haven't, help us out. Help us to grow our channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up, like, and the notification so that you know when there's new videos coming out. And we'll see you back here at Creekside Maples on the next one. Until then, take care, everyone.